letting the dust clear a bit. See, the power comes on like, like a house of fire on this bike. And there's plenty of it there. It's just kind of locked up in the upper RPM range. You have to get in into the bike, into the power, and then it all comes on. They're in the low RPMs, and even the low to mid range, there's hardly anything there. So it makes you earn it. Big time. You want to swap for a minute? You're like, no. <laughs> now I swapped over onto the Kato. Let Sam ride the Honda. He's going this way. Yeah, this bike, there's just so much more power in the low RPM. I think the most telling thing that I can tell you about this is that I was just so much faster on the KTM. Yes, I hadn't ridden either bike, you know, really at all for six months. But when I was on the Honda, I could not keep Sam in my sights. And then when I switched over to his bike, the KTM here, he couldn't get away from me. You know, and so I was just much, much more comfortable and much quicker on the on the Kato than I was in the Honda. And we've got a bunch of improvements that we have already done to the Honda now between uh, the time that we film this and the time that I'm actually editing this and putting it up to YouTube. We'll get the Honda there. We'll make it better. So smooth. And the clutch, oh my gosh. Hydraulic clutch on this is amazing. And that's another thing that I might do to the Honda. I've already geared the thing down. I've already put a flywheel weight on it, which I haven't been able to test yet. But a hydraulic clutch, that would be a fantastic improvement. But I mean, as you saw in the last video, we're already uh, upwards of over $7,000 on the Honda, not including labor. So every time, we, every time we add more into the bike, it's just one more thing where it's like, dang, it, we are a lot of money into this thing. And in the end, it will never have electric start. Um, and it will never be quite as smooth as, as this counterbalanced European bike that I'm riding right now. So um, hopefully we can get the balance better on the bike uh, and just make it uh, feel like a little bit more comfortable um, to ride in, in these types of situations, desert single track and then hopefully mountain single track later in the year uh, or later in 2019 rather. So it's a fun platform. It's been a fun project, um, but it's very telling. There's a lot of improvements that they've made in the last 15, 20 years. See, I can't see as much because of the dust. Hit neutral. I can't see as much because of the dust, but I feel like I don't have to see as much on this bike because the suspension is just so much more predictable to me. I about went down there. Grab too much front brake, locked it up. so tempted to pass Sam right there and if I hadn't if it hadn't been my second day technically back on the bike after six or seven months off of it I probably would have 
it was important here for me to also let Sam, you know, have Sam get a bunch of time on the bike so that I can get his opinion, uh, which there will be an interview coming up later uh, here within a short amount of time on YouTube, where we'll talk about what we experienced on the bikes today because I value Sam's opinion. He was also having a lot of fun on the bike. I could tell by his body language and just by watching his riding that he was having fun on the bike. You know, so, so that's a good thing because this is what we're doing. We're out here to have fun, right? See, it's so much easier to get my foot under the shifter on this bike and click up a gear than it is on the Honda. I'm specifically talking about the different the distance between the foot peg and the shifter. It's the shifter is shorter on the Honda, so there isn't as much room for your foot to get under the shifter. I think part of the problem is just the motocross valving on this bike is, is too stiff. It's just, you feel everything. You know, I've played with the clickers a little bit, but you just really kind of feel everything. And now I'm off trail. You know, one thing that Sam and I were talking about after this ride is it's not like the Honda is terrible. It's just the frame of reference that you're coming from. If off, if all you've ever had is a motocross bike that you've kind of sort of started to convert over for off-road riding, you wouldn't know any different. You would you would adjust to it and, and you would love it because this bike is really awesome. It's a really cool bike. The problem is when you start comparing it uh, to, you know, 25 or 30 other bikes, which I have owned, and then 40 or 45 other bikes, which I've ridden. And then when you start making the comparison, then you start to really see kind of what you're lacking and what you're missing. So it all kind of depends on your frame of reference. This is a cool bike and we'll get it dialed in. It's not too cold. I am wearing three, three, well, I'm wearing four shirts, actually maybe five shirts. But I, I'm a comfortable temperature. It's probably about 38, 34, between 35 and 40 right now, degrees. 